Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as we discuss the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard, Season 1, Episode 8, entitled Broken Pieces. I'll give a scene-to-scene -scene recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side. This video will be a little different as my face will not be featured. I unfortunately injured my right hand and it was really difficult for me to set up camera work and all that good stuff but we are going to have a nice voiceover story time-esque feeling to this video and we are going to keep on pushing that's all coming up next it's bunny Opening scene, we are taken to the planet, the grief world, 14 years prior. And before we can see any face, we hear a woman's voice giving a speech to a circle of women. And we then see Commodore O's face. And she's saying that our foremothers were looking for a system to answer all of the riddles, the eight stars. They created this storehouse of preserved memories of the grim fate of the civilization that perished here, the annihilation of this place. And we don't know the race that left these warnings, but the Jacques Vosch, we've worked really hard and we've done things in the shadows ever since to prevent the second coming of the destroyers. And as she's saying this, we are seeing some very familiar faces that are going in this circle and listening to this speech. And the person that we know now is Commodore O, she says, some of you will go mad during this ammunition process and some of you will get stronger, but endure while you can. And they start the process and we do see what she mentions. Some people are going so mad that they are ripping at their faces and they are smashing their heads against rocks to stop such a terrible, painful process. But we see that they're seeing glimpses and, and, and visions of synthetic life and things being blown up and, and destroyed. So it is called everyone to go mad and to kill themselves to stop such a terrible thing but we do see that the last person standing is Rizzo and Rizzo says to Commodore who we know is Commodore or oh how do we stop this and the person that we know is Commodore O says go to the planet the humans call Mars and Rizzo notices that her aunt barely made it through and she has seemed to go mad per se the next scene takes us to what looks like a room to recuperate from or as we know as a hospital and rizzo calls the young woman aunt so we automatically know that this is her aunt and she says to her while she's in a comatose state you took us in when our parents died and i would have made a better board cube we're we're hunting down now the synthetic who can give us more information and there's a lot to do so I need you to wake up so you can join us and she continues to go on and explain how she's disappointed that her aunt went through her process and didn't necessarily make it through clear-minded at the end of that ammunition process so you can feel as an audience viewer the anger and disappointment per se of her aunt so we can make a guess that she's always viewed her aunt as a very strong person but yet she still wants her aunt to make it through to join them in this quest in which they originally wanted to do they wanted to stop synthetic life 
Meanwhile, El Nor, he's still on this queue being tracked down by the Romulans. And while he's trying to fight his way out, he is unfortunately outnumbered. And gladly, Seven of Nine comes out of nowhere and is able to rescue him and fight away those Romulans. And she's using a gun, which is really helping because all Elnor has is his sword. And Elnor is so grateful that he thanks her with this endearing hug and seven of nine is thrown back at it and she really doesn't know emotionally how to react but then she comes to and thinking wow I need to console him and she consoles him by telling him everything's gonna be okay we're fine and Elnor has a hug to where he can barely let her go because he is so thankful that she came to his rescue following that scene we have the opening credits Picard and Soji are finally able to beam back down to the ship and unfortunately Rios is frozen when he sees Soji. He can't move. He's in complete shock and Picard is trying to get his attention and saying hey we need to secure Starbase Link to Starfleet Command ASAP but he's not moving. Rios is in complete awe and shock of Soji, but we don't know why. Why is he in such confliction with move, moving? And his hearing starts to vague out. And Picard says, Rios, I need you to secure Starbase Link to Starfleet Command ASAP. And Rafi wants to know why and what's going on with Soji. Rios says, okay, I can secure this link and the closest one that I know of is Deep Space 12. It's the closest. But after I do that, that's it. That's all I can do. I'm out. Rafi is suspecting that Soji is the one that has a tracking device. And, and that it's possible that she is a Romulan spy. She's also feeling that way because, of course, Agnes has a tracking device and it was found on her and she could be a Romulan spy. She doesn't trust anyone and it correlates with her initial feelings about Agnes in the beginning, about why she, why she was so anxious to join their mission and Picard is taken back by that. As I predicted, we do see Kirsten she comes to Picard via hologram and Picard is trying to give her all this information and things that they need and stuff that's had going on. And Kirsten is telling him, Picard, I'm trying to tell you something, Picard, wait. And unfortunately, she drops an F-bomb and saying, stop, wait, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. The Vite system people are being hunted down and there's clearly something going on and I'm sending you a squad right now. I'm sending a squad straight to you and Picard is clearly, finally happy that they could be getting some help that they need. Rafi is speaking with one of the hospitality holograms and she's saying, wow, isn't it just so interesting what's going on about Agnes, what she's done? And the hologram mm, is really not up to date about what she's been saying. And she figures out that this is the navigation hologram and he's really not up to date about what's going on in the medical area of the ship. And Rafi says, well, why has Rios freaked out? What is going on? And the navigation hologram says, hey, after he activated all of the holograms to do everything on the ship, he went somewhere to be alone, and I haven't seen him since. Hmm. And Rios, she's surveilling everything. And she's thinking about different notes that she took when surveilling the cube. She says the Romulan kept drawing these these eight circles over and over again in this formation and since you're the navigation hologram maybe you can help me with this and the hologram says yeah it's a, a depiction of an octonary and she says wow all this time I thought it was members of the conclave of eight and I thought this there were people um that who could maybe got in place to uh, attack Mars, but in actuality, all of that time, it was the octonary. Wow, I mean, thank you. This is a big break for me. Rizzo finds the device that will activate the queen cell, 
and she tells her colleague, what is the escape that we have planned just in case? What's going to happen? He assures her that in the meantime, they are making sure that she has an escape ship. And also, if it comes down to it, they can activate a certain area of the cube that will release all of the Borgs that are in assimilation and those that are, are inactive. And she says, okay, let's put that in place. Meanwhile, Seven of Nine is active and she's trying to activate the cube so they can escape. And also some ideas of how to get the Borg activated just in case. And she's doing all types of coatings and maneuverings within the cube and different sequences. And the cube is starting to regenerate. Soji is still having a difficult time in learning that she's not real. And Picard says, you're worried that you don't have a past or a history, but that's just not true. And Soji says, so I get it, you're talking about data. So tell me about him. And Picard says he was nice, thoughtful, and he made us laugh. And Soji says, so you loved him. And this takes back an emotionalist Picard. And he says, yes, in my own way. And Soji says, I think, or do you think that he loved you? And Picard does admit that his emotional capacity is limited, is limited, like mine. And Soji wants him to describe, what do you think Data would remember about you? Maybe that might be helpful. And he goes along in thinking that he hopes that Data would see him as someone that was helpful and knowing that his goals meant so much more to him than himself and that he's always an important entity of his life. And after Soji listens to all that, she says, he loved you. And without word, Picard is very touched and you can see it in his face. Rafi is still deep in thought and she's looking for the real Rios. And she's still wondering why he's hiding and why does he keep doing this? And, and why is he so taken back at certain things? And we learned that the new hologram that she's speaking of is engineering. So he's not up to date about what navigation knows and what the health navigational system knows and hologram services. And she says, what would it take to have that octanary star system? What would that occur naturally? And the engineering hologram says, mm, that's close to none, this being a natural occurrence. And she says, yes, you would have to move suns and place them together, but why? Rafi is so frustrated, she's looking for some type of alcoholic calmness to bring her down. But she then realizes that she has locked herself out of the command to get any type of alcoholic treat. And the hospitality hologram says, hey, the last time that Rios went into this isolated stoop, he was in that stoop for a while. But he needs someone to talk to. A human confidant. Rios is in his quarters and he is drunk. And he's thinking back at his Starfleet years and memories. He's going through photos and pictures. And Rafi tries to say, hey, can you let me in? But he quickly tells her to, quote, piss off. The photos are so endearing that it brings him to tears. And we notice that he has a trunk full of Starfleet memories, a Starfleet uniform, everything that he would need as a Starfleet employee. As he's looking at the photos, we see one of him and the previous captain. And also a hand drawing of someone that appears to look just like Soji. Seven of Nine discovers that there are thousands that are still in these spaces. And she could reactivate them and form them against the Romulan troops. But that would be like slavery all over again. And it's dangerous to her because she says, I may not want to release them out of this control. 
we need this, but this it's something that I'm afraid of. And Elnor says, well, this is what we need now, correct? It's something to help us out of this situation, correct? And Seven of Nine is deep in thought about how much further she wants to take this and if she's going to reactivate them in order to help them against the Romulans. Rafi has collected all five holograms that resemble Rios. And she says, you all know something special about him, but it's broken down into pieces. One may know one part of him and one may know the other. And one of the holograms says, you know, I remember him speaking of a girl named Jana or Jana. And the poor thing is so tragic. But as he starts to remember things, those memories quickly delete or the holograms seem to quickly forget. And another hologram says, I remember something about the captain too. Um, Vladimir? And he committed suicide, but Rafi wants him to know why. Why did he commit suicide? And the holograms, as soon as they remember a thought, they quickly can't remember, as if their memories or thoughts were instructed to disappear. Agnes awakens from her medical coma, and Picard wants to know why. And as soon as we get to where we need to go, I need you to surrender to the murder of Bruce Maddox. But tell me why. And Agnes says, Commodore O did something to me. She wanted me to ingest a tracker. She put something in my mind that I don't want to talk about. And it's so bad that committing suicide, that thought, comforts me. And Picard says, was this something Commodore O experienced herself? Was this a memory from her specifically? And Agnes says, no, it's, it's a threshold. And unless we react quickly to destroy the synthetics and get rid of all of the possibilities, it's hell and it will come again. And the threshold as, and Soji interrupts her speech and she finish, finish, finishes her sentences and said, stopping the coming of the destroyer, me, Rafi is so concerned for Rios that she overrides the command to keep her out of his quarters. And she wants to know, after fixing him a nice cup of tea, Alonzo Vandermeer, who's that? And Rios painfully says, I used to pretend that he was my father. Come to find out he's a cold-blooded murderer. So we have a sequences of scenes going back from Rafi and Rios to Agnes and Soji. And Agnes is amazed at the existence of Soji and she's so anxious to ask her all of these questions and she says, well, what do you do when you're sad, when you're hungry, when you're thirsty? Soji says, when I get sad, I cry. When I'm hungry, I eat. And when I'm thirsty, I drink. And Agnes says, wow, you have a constellation of beauty marks. You are a true work of art. Everything about you was planned. And Soji wants to know, am I a person? At least to you right now in this moment, am I a person? We then go back to Rios explaining to Rafi that Alonzo received a command from Starfleet to kill someone. And after I grilled him about it, he killed himself. And... Out of panic, I, I released the dead bodies into space and I cleared the info in the transporter log. And I told Starfleet that he just killed himself for no reason. And Starfleet called it this post-dramatic hysteria. And he shows her a photo and he says, this looks a lot like the girl he killed. And Rafi says, wow. It's, it's evident that this instruction to kill another person was to kill this synthetic who gave you this command? Soji tells Agnes, so I'm guessing that Commodore O wants you to kill me too, but I won't give you that chance. And Agnes says, after I've learned everything that I've learned about you and everything that's been going on, I would never try to hurt you in any type of way. So Rizzo is trying to kill off as many boards as possible on the cube 
while seven of nine is trying to reactivate them and to take control. We then see her enter in different sequences as she's slowly gaining control of the Borg, saying, we are Borg, and she's activating them all slowly. And as they are coming back too, Rizzo gives the command to release them in outer space. And then we see that walls start to open, things start to activate, and we hear these squeals and screams of thousands of Borg going into space and seven of nine screams from disappointment saying no as she sees and feels all of these pre-assimilated Borgs go into outer space. Agnes tells everybody on the ship that when they get back to Starfleet she's turning in herself for murder and Rafi goes in to update everything that she she's learned and she says two to three thousand years ago or two to three hundred thousand years ago eight sons to, were together and and there was a planet in the middle and this ceremony this process this admonition and they felt that they did what was necessary and to don't create synthetic life's Forms because it's possible that they can evolve past their creators. And Picard says, yes, that the Javaj feel like they had to just terminate all of this synthetic life. And Rafi says that you have to, over a period of time, that synthetic seems like they were evolving past the possibility of who were equal, like humans. And she says there has to be a mole. A mole was sent via the uh, to the Romulans, half Romulan and Vulcan, and that person raised in the ranks. And that mole is now the head of the security, named O. And she helped to create a terrible event on Mars, allowing them to ban the synthetics, this this beautiful flower of Jana from a strange world. And Bruce went there after the ban. He wanted to finish these works of synthetics after everything happened. And Soji is so upset that everything that she's known is because of her. And she wants to go home and take control of the ship. And she's going to the front of the ship and she wants to get there. And Picard says, look, we, we've tried to do everything else our way. Let's try it her way. And he's telling the rest of the crew that maybe what she's doing is correct. And maybe this is the start of beginning this new voyage. Rizzo has learned that the fleet is now knowledgeable of where this synthetic homeworld is. And Rizzo is surrounded by Borgs and it seems like she's under attack and she can't get out. And they have them, her under their grasp. But as soon as we think that she's defeated, she escapes to a standby ship. And Seven of Nine says that the cube is ours again to all of the Borg. And she's upset that Rizzo got away, but there's still more work that has to be done. Picard tries to console Rios and says that, you know, you're the captain. And we're going to make sure that we follow your command. And Rios knows that Starfleet will understand and that they know that they failed him. Rios is worried about where they are going, what planet that they're going to, and that they call her the destroyer and maybe they're right. Soji says, we are here. And Picard is amazed that what would take light years to get to, that Soji got them there in a matter of minutes. And Picard says to everyone, we have no choice. We're here. And we have to go forward. And that is the end of the episode. They have arrived to the world that Soji recognizes as home. What new things will they learn? Stay tuned for episode nine and come back and share this channel with friends who are all Trekkies and those that are new to the Star Trek 
Picard series. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Make sure to check me out also on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. Check out my playlist to look at more exciting movie and television show reviews. Until next time, stay tuned for episode nine. Have a good one. Bye.